Hey, Shalom. First and foremost, call Halal Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakah Kadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of the Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, salutations also go unto the hopeful elect. So it's the brother Azar Rayyad back again with another lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. And you can see the title of the lesson, The Modern Day Prophets of Baal. Now I titled this lesson, The Modern Day Prophets of Baal, is because we live in a day and age where massive deception, you know, it's not just today, but it's been that way for a long time. But especially now since we're at the end, we're at the very end of prophecy, um, Satan, you know, the, the uh, left hand is working extra hard on their uh, enchantments on the people, you know, but all of this really goes back to getting you to bow down to the image of Baal, all right, which ultimately uh, Baal worship, it all goes back to Satan, it all goes back to rebellion against the law, statutes, and commandments of the Heavenly Father, right? When you go into the scriptures, you know, of course, you have the famous account in uh, 1 Kings, the 18th chapter of Ezekiel and the prophets of Baal, in which, um, you know, basically Ezekiel challenged uh, the prophets of Baal, which were much more and, and many than he, you know, here it is, you have one man of the Lord, and you have 400 something prophets of Baal, you know, and you know, Ezekiel basically challenged them and said, hey, you know, let's see who has the real power. And of course, we know, um, you know, uh, the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Ezekiel called down fire upon the altar, and the prophets of Baal uh, were not able to uh, complete their um, prayer, you know, so we have seen this, uh, you know, the same very thing today in these times, you know, um, enchantments are working on a very large level. All right. And pretty much everyone outside of the hopefully elect are um, captured are taken by these enchantments. All right. So I just want to read this here. This is from Britannica, Britannica, Salakia, going into uh, Baal. So it says Baal. It's a god worshipped in many ancient Middle Eastern communities, especially among the Canaanites, who apparently considered him a fertility deity and one of the most important gods in the pantheon. As a Shemitic, common on Baal, Hebrew, meant owner or lord, although it could be used more generally. For example, a Baal of wings was a winged creature. And in the plural, Baalim of arrows in indicated archers. Right now, when you see ba, uh, Baalim in the scriptures, that refers to um, those that follow Baal. You know, just you know, that's basically like a general term to refer to those that um, follow Baal or worship Baal. Right. So you see here, he's giving you that Baal was an ancient. Uh, Eastern deity, you know, mainly worshipped in the land of Canaan. Now, um, going into Baal, this really all goes back to the very beginning. You know, some of the earliest, really, to be technical, man, this all goes back to the garden. You know, all of this really goes back to the garden, man. You know, but even the very earliest civilizations, when they call secular history, the uh, Sumerians, which were the ancient Babylonians, and even uh, going into the ancient uh, uh, Egyptians, right? Baal was the main deity. You know, Baal was uh, the, the uh, most prominent deity of the pantheon of gods that these nations worshipped. Now, let's go down a little bit. And also, uh, Baal is also tied into um, um, Molech. Okay, which is uh, the god of child sacrifice, which we know what that's all about. You know, you got the Bohemian Grove, you know, Planned Parenthood. Then, you know what I'm saying? Even when you get into it, when you really dig deep and do the research, man, you got millions of children 
they come up missing every single year. What do you think is happening to these children? What, you know, where do you think they are? <laughs> you see, you have to understand, man, that this place is modern day Babylon the Great. You see, so this place is much more wicked than ancient Babylon ever was. It's also spiritual Egypt, Sodom. Okay, so all the practices that were practiced in these ancient empires are now being here practiced today, but it's all in one. It's all combined together into this conglomerate of a nation known as America and the EU. All right. But um, yeah, going back to the point, you know, Baal was the top deity, you know, and, uh, you know, uh, the god Molech, you know, they would sacrifice children unto Baal. Um, homosexuality was a, a, you know, big practice among these, these nations, man. You know, uh, it says the worship of Baal was popular in Egypt from the later New Kingdom in about 1400 BCE to its end, 1075 BCE, through the influence of the Arameans who borrowed the Babylonian, notice I mentioned before, ancient Sumeria, which was the ancient Babylonian Empire. Right, Pron pronunciation, Bel. The god ultimately became known as the Greek Belos, identified with Zeus. So you see that this uh, god Baal, throughout history, has been changed to different names. In ancient Babylon, it was known as Bel. Then when you get to the time of uh, the Greeks, it was known as uh, uh, Zeus. Okay, which Zeus is the top god in the in uh, the uh, greek pantheon of deities so you see all of this you know all of these um gods okay zeus bell baal um you know horus you know what i'm saying um you see all of these deities really go back to one source which is baal which really is satan you see and when you look into the occult of what these elites practice, man. Like I mentioned, uh, Bohemian Grove. Who who are they sacrificing unto? What names are they calling upon? Well, it's Baal. You see, all this goes back to ancient uh, Baal worship. And see, the people that are in charge of this world now, they serve Baal. And you have idiots out here that have no understanding, no. Um, they're not studied at all. They'll come out and tell you that there is no God. Well, you have to explain why all these satanic practices are being done behind closed doors that the elites are, are, are doing. You, hey, listen, man, you never heard an elite come out and say that there is no God. <laughs> you see, um, even when you go to Klaus Schwab uh, that, that, and that devil Noah Yuval Harari, they're not telling you that there's no God, but they're telling you that they're better than the God of the Bible. They're telling you that there's no more need for the God of the Bible, that they are God now, that they can dictate your future and your outcome of life. That's what they're telling you, but they're not denying the Most High, but they're just telling you that, hey, the Most High got to take a back seat. We're in control now, right? So that's why the scriptures say, as it is written, the fool said in his heart that there is no God. And because the people that run this world, they know what's up. They know what's really going on. They know who they worship. See, but these these uh, peon, uh, you know, <laughs> um, bird brain people out there, man, they, they don't know what's going on. They're just fixed in a, a small box, right? But um, the most recent thing in the news... This uh, NFL player for the Bills, DeMar Hamlin, um, allegedly um, collapsed on the field. Now, this is a video here going into it. And when you watch the hit, because um, I've watched the video a few times back. And when you watch the video, it wasn't even a direct hit. It's kind of like uh, 85 ran into him, but then he just fell down. Like, you know, it, it was a basic tackle. Which these guys are trained from Pee Wee football to take tackles, man. So why all of a sudden is it this this one hit and he takes him out? And it was this um there was this doctor that came on and he's been on a 
I seen him on a couple platforms. I forget what his name is, but but he they made up some new scientific term to describe what happened to Demar Hamlin. And of course, a lot of people aren't buying it. A lot of people aren't really, um, you know, feeding into it because now the narrative is the the uh, bourbon, the uh, bourbon shot. That's what's having these players collapse. Which that's another point that these devils want to demonize. You see, because uh, you just had um, you just had them come out not too long ago and say that uh, people that are anti bourbon are now the biggest threat to national security. So you see, once again, the modern day prophets of Baal, because they'll use these certain enchantments or what they call psyops now, psychological operations on the people to further their agenda. So for example, if their agenda is to um, throw people in jail who speak out against the, the uh, bourbon shot, well, they need a cause for that to happen because they can't just come out and just you know lock you up and throw you in jail because people on paper in this country have rights, right? And anything that goes against those, those, those rights are a civil offense, right? Because you have civil rights laws on the books that every citizen is entitled to, but they have to find a way to get around that to set their agenda up, which we know that their agenda is to um, silence anyone who is not for the new agenda, which is the new world order, the, the new B system. That's their agenda to silence anyone who is against that narrative, right? So now everyone, you know, everyone's seen this video here with Demar Hamlin, him collapsing on the field. And people are like, yo, you seen that? What's going on? Like, you know, then they come to the conclusion, oh, he took the bourbon. You know, DeMar took, took a shot of the bourbon. He took too many, you know what I'm saying? It's like he took too many shots of the bourbon and he got drunk and he, and he you know, he, he uh, passed out. So now people are correlating. They're, they're, they're looking at the common denominators of what led up to his collapse and they saying that it was a cardiac arrest, allegedly. Now, I'm saying allegedly because if you watch this video, um, this individual here, he he, he um, goes into some very um, compelling evidence to suggest that this was all scripted, that this was all a massive psychological operation on, on other people, <clears throat> which if you watch it, it's, it's, it's uh, something that you can't put past Esau, all right? You can't put nothing past this devil, you see, because pretty much everything in this world is, is a lie outside of this truth, man. You know, you have to question everything. Like, the way that you've grown up and been conditioned to, you know what I'm saying? Like, there, 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 was, a, there was a point in time in which you might have believed in Santa Claus. There was a point in time in which you might have believed in, in the Easter Bunny. But you come to a mature point of realizing that, okay, these things are not real. You know, these things really don't exist. It was just all a figment of my nation, my imagination, Salakia, to make you docile. So many of these things, sports, football, which, you know, it's nothing wicked about sports and football. But when these devils put their hands into it, when they put the, mani the uh, manipulation into the sport, that's when it becomes something that is being used to further a sinister agenda. Right, because they showed you that they have the magnetic gloves, they got the magnetic balls. That's how some of these guys be making these spectacular catches. Which, once again, if you watch the video, I'm not going to play it, but it, if you watch it, it makes sense. It makes sense as to how these things are, are, are being done. But it's nothing new to brothers that these things are, are scripted because these things, um, you know, football the NBA, the NFL, you know what I'm saying, soccer, these things are scripted, man. You know, it's all to um, get people uh, in their emotions. It's all to take people's mind away from what's really going on. Bread and circus. You know, bread and circus, man, which that goes back to ancient Rome. You know, but this is all to further the agenda of Baal. To get you to bow the knee to the image of Baal. See, because these devils are moving in very soon. 
to do away with all free speech, to do away with freedom of expression. Uh, you're not going to be able to protest. You're not going to be able to um, speak out against the powers that be. And once again, anyone that does, you're going to be demonized. You're going to be seen as a terrorist, as you're a threat to the uh, agenda. All right. And you have. Listen, man, this is why I say everything is, is a psyop, because you had Kanye come out, which he's now missing. He hasn't been seen about a month now. Then you had Kyrie come right after him. Who knows? Wait, listen, whether these guys were set up or not, we know that it's Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai that's moving the pieces on the chessboard, right? But we know that these devils never let a good crisis go to waste. So even if Kanye does come out and say what he said, Kyrie came out, posted the, the you know, the uh, clip of the video. He said what he said. But these devils can use that and say, oh, they're spreading misinformation. Oh, um, they're spreading a, a false narrative. So we have to silence that. We can't have people subscribing to these schools of thought because it's a danger to our power structure. Understand? So this is what they need to mitigate. This is what they need to um, destroy. That whole thought process of their narrative being false and the narrative that's being um, pushed in these last days of the truth they want to demonize that. So this Damar Hamlin thing here, I mean, you just have to keep an open mind. Now, apparently he's he's in the hospital. He was on life support. I mean, who really knows how true all of this is, man? Like, we're not there. We can't see what's really going on. But allegedly, these things are, are happening. But the point of this is, man, you know, this this all goes back to the enchantments of Baal. Right, which these elites are pushing upon the people. So this is just to be aware of uh, the devil's devices at all times. Okay, now let's go here to Isaiah, the 47th chapter and verse 12. It says, Stand now with thine enchantments and with the multitude of thy sorceries, wherein thou hast labored from thy youth. Now what does it mean when it says, wherein thou hast labored from thy youth? Going back to uh, Genesis, uh, let, let's let's go there real quick. Genesis three and one. Genesis three and one. Now we know that the serpent was in the garden in the beginning. All right. Now it says, now the serpent was more subtile than any beast of the field which the Lord Yahweh had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath Yahweh said, He shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Now what is Satan doing here? He's causing reasonable doubt. See, he was causing Eve to question what the Most High said was true. He was causing Eve to, you know, basically plant that seed of, of, of doubt, of uh, mistrust in her mind to go against the Most High and think that it was okay. Right? And these devils, these, these, these uh, modern day serpents, which is Esau, Edom, they doing the same exact thing. So it's all a correlation. But when it says, when it says in Isaiah, from the days of thy youth, going all the way back to the garden, man, as the serpent since the very beginning. Now going back, wherein thou hast labored from thy youth in what? Deception, sorceries, enchantments. Okay, this is what this devil has labored in since the days of his youth. If so, be thou shalt be able to profit. If so, be thou mayest prevail. Right. So, hey, Isaiah is saying that you've labored in these things since you was a youth. Now, stand now with your enchantments. Maybe they'll be good enough to profit you. Maybe they'll be good enough that you may prevail against the most high. But let's read on verse uh, 13. Thou art wearied in the multitude of thy counsels. Let now the astrologers, the stargazers, the monthly prognosticators stand up and save thee from these things that shall come upon thee. Now, these are all the mediums that Esau uses to deceive the people. Astrologers, stargazers, monthly prognosticators, right? The so-called wise men of this world. They are used to plan these um, elaborate psyops, enchantments on the people so that they can believe it, so that the people can be dumbed down into a state of complete docility in which you're not 
you're so bogged down with the real misinformation that the misinformation that's coming at you, you can't even realize that it's misinformation <laughs> because you've been groomed and conditioned to believe that these things are the truth which have been set in front of you. But in reality, they're all enchantments. They're all sorceries, witchcraft. Okay, playing a, a uh, you know, deceiving your mind. Right? So Esau is counting on these things to save him from the things that are to come upon thee. Or to, or to come upon him, which is what? Ultimate destruction from Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. See? So when you go back here, like I said, you just got to keep an open mind. Okay, you have to really be in the spirit to realize what's real and what's not, man. Because a majority of people will watch something like this and think that it's real. Or they'll believe whatever narrative that the devil gives them. Oh, well, it was uh, something. I really forget the term that this guy used. Um, to describe what happened if I had the video I should have I should have pulled it up but uh, Lord willing I'll, I'll upload it later if I find it but um yeah it, it was just complete BS you know what I'm saying it, it was all BS he talking about like um you know Demar Hamlin got got hit within point one of a second to where he, the the, the uh, pulse of his heart skipped a beat and that's what made him uh collapse which come on man you know what I'm saying? People are not going for that. That's why the, the, the main narrative that's out there now is that he collapsed from the bourbon shot, which, again, that's the narrative that these devils want to um, eradicate. Because people know what's going on. You're seeing it all over the world. You're seeing the mad soccer players drop dead. You're seeing football players, man, basketball players. It's happening to everybody. So what's the common denominator? What do they all have in common that is causing them to collapse? We all know what it is. Now, that's a very real thing. The bourbon shot is taking a lot of people out. That is real. But the point in this is to demonize that, that thought. Right? Now, let's, let's go here. It says, six-year-old uh, shoots teacher in first grade classroom. Virginia police say. So... Once again, this is Babylon the Great. This is the land of great wickedness. Okay? You have six-year-olds now, allegedly, in school, that's shooting teachers. Now, I just want to put this out there. We don't know because from, from, from all of the school shootings that you've seen in the past, you have to question it. Now, may some people have, have died in these school shootings? Sure, because they're always going to have collateral damage. But is it to the extent of what they say it is? There, there's no real way for, for you to know. And there's been information whistleblowers that have come out and said that these things are psyops as well, that this is all to further the agenda. But this here is the same thing, because what agenda do they want to uh, push to take away the guns? OK, they want to take away the guns. They want to make private ownership of anything that you have illegal. Your man Klaus Schwab came out and said that he wants to eradicate the private ownership of cars. Either you need to walk or you need to share your vehicle. You um, Use these ride share platforms, Lyft, Uber. Why do you think these things have been put in place? Because ultimately they want to take away your private ownership. And the famous saying from Klaus Schwab, in the Great Reset, you shall own nothing and be happy. Okay, so these, these devils are really putting these things in place, man. All right? And a part of that is taking away the guns. So, of course, when everyone sees this, it's like, oh, my God. A six-year-old is shooting teachers? No, we need to get rid of guns, yo. We need to get these guns out of the streets, which where is a six-year-old getting a gun anyway? Now, like we said, who knows what happened? This is just a story that they're giving you. You, you know what I'm saying? We don't really know. The truth of the situation for all we know it could have been the teacher that just fired off a gun in the school you know put put the gun in the six-year-old hand to say that oh he has a gun that he shot up hey who knows or it, it may very well be real but again these devils can can work it from any which way if it is a real organic situation they can say yeah hey, well look 
We have six-year-olds now that are coming to school with guns and shooting teachers. We This is why we need to get rid of the guns because guns are too accessible. You have too many guns out here. You see where, can you see where they're, where they're going with this, right? So it says, this happened in Newport News VA. A six-year-old student shot and wounded a Virginia teacher Friday during an altercation inside a first grade classroom. Now, what kind of altercation can a six-year-old and, and a teacher have? What? <laughs> uh, hey, Brandon, it's, 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 uh, it's time for bedtime. Bitch, I ain't taking no bedtime pot. And he just up on it and just start blasting. Like, what kind of altercation can you have between a damn six-year-old, man? A, 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 a damn first grader. You see, so, it, you know, it's just some things you see like this. It's like, yo, E, so you're getting sloppy, man. You know, like, what like what kind of altercation can you have between a six-year-old to where he's going to up a gun on you or he's going to up a Glock on you? <laughs> Police and school officials in the city of Newport News said, says no students were injured in the shooting at Richneck Elementary School, police said. The teacher, a woman in her 30s, suffered life-threatening injuries. Newport News Police Chief Steve Drew told reporters that her condition had improved somewhat by late afternoon. Police said the child had a handgun in the classroom and that they took that student into custody. It says, uh, we did not have a situation where someone was going around a school shooting, Drew told reporters. We have a situation in which... We have a situation in one particular location where a gunshot was fired. He added that the shooting was not an accident. So once again, man, uh, you got to take this with a grain of salt because we know what these devils agenda is. And we know that at this point, um, they're getting desperate. So they're going to have to go to more and more um, extreme cases. Right. Because, listen, all they have to say is, look, the youth are in danger. There's so many guns out here that now even six-year-olds are shooting teachers and, and nearly fatally killing them. So this is an emergency. Joe Biden, you, you know what I'm saying, it's going to be like he needs to sign an executive order to get these guns off the streets. But what's that going to lead to? That's going to lead to sedition among men. That's going to lead to a civil war because you, you got to keep in mind, man, Esau's blessing is the sword. You really believe that these Edomites, that these um, American Edomites are just going to give up their, their, their um, guns? <laughs> you, 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 you really believe that they're going to give up their rights to, to, to um, bear arms in the name of safety? Hell no. It'll be a bloody civil war in America before that happens. Trust me. And listen, you got these Edomites that's ready out there, man. They, they, they itching to go to war. See? But, once again... Order out of chaos, right? Novos Ordos Soclorum, New World Order. You look on the back of your one dollar bill, man. It says Novos Ordos Soclorum, which is Latin for New World Order. So all these things are to bring about the NWO. See, so truly, man, the modern day prophets of Baal. And you have to keep in mind that these Edomites, man, they're the masters of deception. You know, and, and they believe in not letting any good crisis go to waste. So anything that comes up, whether it be organic or whether it be set up, is all to further their agenda. All right. Psalm 10 and 3. Yeah, man, it's all enchantments. It's all it's all to uh, play with, with your mind. Psalms 23. <clears throat> well, let's start off at one. Why standest thou afar off, O Lord? Why hidest thou thyself in times of trouble? The wicked in his pride doth persecute the poor. Let them be taken in let them be taken in the devices that they have imagined. For the wicked boasteth of his heart's desire, and blesses the covetous whom the Lord abhors abhorreth. The wicked through the pride of his countenance will not seek after Yahweh. Yahweh is not in all his thoughts. See now, this devil boasted of his heart's desire, mainly now being done through Klaus Schwab, 
the young global leaders of the World Economic Forum. They're, they're coming out boldly now and telling you of their heart's desire that you be happy and own nothing, that you give up your private ownership to your house, to your car, to your uh, phone, you know, to, to uh, your right to bear arms. See, that you be completely and wholly dependent upon the B system, which we know is going to come in the form of the MOTB, Revelation 13 and 16. <clears throat> but they're openly now coming out and boasting of their heart's desire to, to the people. They're not hiding it no more. And the reason why they're not hiding it is because they realize that they're at the end, that they have to bring these things forth. It's not a secret no more. The 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 NWO is not a secret. Everyone knows about the about the NWO. But what are you going to do about it? Really, if you're a regular Babylonian, if you're a regular person in this world and you know about the NWO, how are you going to stop it? Because you're still dependent on this system. So when they're ready to bring about the NWO, is is either you going to get down or you're going to lay down. That, that's really all it's going to be. So these devils don't really care to hide it anymore because they, they understand that there's nothing that uh, the average person can really do about it, man. You know, you're going to have to bend down to their will to bow the image to Salaki, <laughs> to bow the knee to the image of Baal, ultimately. See? So let these things, you know, just, um, you know, once again, take these things with a grain of salt. Because, you know, we, we understand where these devils are going with these things and that you have to question everything that these elites are doing out here, man. Okay, whether it be small or a great thing, you know, all these things are uh, signs of the time. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and end it right there. Hopefully this lesson was edifying through the Rakah Kedash. In closing, call hello, Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rakah Kedash. And until next time, shalom to the elect.